and welcome to Take Your Territory with Jamie Rohrbach. This is the podcast where I encourage you to go out and take your dream, receive your destiny from the Lord Jesus, the destiny that He planned for you before the foundation of the world. This is the territory that God has ordained for your life. It's a big dream that you have, and it can happen. Every good thing is waiting for you, and today we're going to talk about making that visible in your life. Stay tuned for today's episode. Hello and welcome to the very first episode of the Take Your Territory podcast with Jamie Rohrbaugh. I am Jamie Rohrbaugh and I am happy to have you with me today. Thanks for taking the time to listen. Today's topic is where does power come from? Stay tuned. Well, I am so excited to be with you today and I want to talk to you just to set the stage for Take Your Territory. Because as you and I walk together through every week's podcast, I want you to be motivated. I want you to be encouraged. And in order for all of that to happen, we have to talk first about where the power to do life well comes from. Where does the power come from for you to show up every day and slay, as I like to say? I love that term. It's a motto that recently I've been feeling the Lord has kind of dropped in my heart. Show up and slay. You know, do what you do well, crush every day. Just do an amazing job at everything you do and take the territory of your dreams. That's really what this podcast is all about. I'm not podcasting just to have another space to talk about what I always talk about. Although I guess in some ways I will be talking about things that you know me for. But on this podcast, I specifically want to encourage you and motivate you to take the territory of your dreams. Your dreams are so important, my friend, and you are the only person that can make your dreams happen. Now, I don't mean you have to go out and do it all by yourself. That's what we're going to talk about today, because today we're talking about where does the power come from to make your dreams happen. At the same time, I want you to be so aware that your dreams depend on your actions. Will God be there to help you? Absolutely, he will. And I'm going to show you that today. But you know what? If you don't step out and do what you're called to do, if you don't take the territory of your dreams on purpose, life will get in the way. And life and the humdrum of life and all the fires that you put out every day will rob you of your dreams. They'll rob you of the power that you could experience. Those things will rob you of the opportunity to thrive and bloom and be blessed and just be the person in every way that you have always dreamed of being. I want to give you permission, if you're waiting for permission, to be who you are. I just want to see you thrive. I want to see you advance. I want to see you go after everything that God has for you. So today we're talking about where does the power come from to do that? And here is the answer. In one very short sentence, it's found in the Bible. In Zechariah 4, 6, you will hear me talk a lot about the Bible because the Bible is God's message to people. And so if we're going to be tuned in to power, if we're going to be tuned in to taking our territory and walk in that lane, that we were created to be in, my friend, you have got to be tuned in to the person who created you, to the one who created you, who knows you best and loves you most. And that would be Jesus Christ. So I want you to know what he says about where your power comes from. Okay. What he says is found in the Bible in a book called Zechariah, Zechariah 4 and verse 6. And it says this, not by might, nor by power, But by my spirit, says the Lord. What does that mean? It means that God is with you, my friend, right now in your car, in your house, wherever you are. Maybe you're jogging right now. I don't know where you are, but where you are right now, God is with you. The Bible says that there's no place you could ever go and get away from the spirit of God. He's everywhere all at one time. And you know what? It's not your own physical strength. It's not the power of your own will that gets you places. It is his spirit. It is his spirit. It is his spirit. I can't say that often enough. The spirit of God is who moves you because he loves you so much and he is with you right now. 
Now, if you have made Jesus Christ the Savior and the boss of your life, then the Spirit of God actually lives inside you helping you. And today I want us to look for just a few minutes at who is Holy Spirit. Who is that Spirit of God? Now, I'm not going to call him the Holy Spirit like he's an object, you know, like the book, the chair, the cat. Holy Spirit is not an object. He's a person. And so I really try to avoid that phrase, the Holy Spirit, although sometimes I may mess up and say it. I hope not. But if I do, forgive me. But I want to talk to you today about who he is so that you'll know how to talk to him and you'll know how to receive from him and you'll know how to co-labor with him on your day-to-day life and on all the tasks that you have before you today. So first, I want you to know Holy Spirit is God. He is an individual person. He is the third person of the Trinity of God which is God manifesting himself in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, who is Jesus Christ, and God, who is also known as Holy Spirit. Now, in the Bible, Holy Spirit, his name is often referred to as Ruach. And that word, it's a word from one of the ancient languages, and it actually means the wind of God. Okay, the wind of God. In other places, he's referred to as Pneuma, the breath of God. That's where we get pneumonia when there's a sickness of the lungs. Well, pneuma is simply the word that means the breath of God. So he is actually a person. He's alive, but he is the wind and the breath of God who propels you to walk forward in power every day. Right now, wherever you're going and whatever you're doing, Holy Spirit, the breath of God is right now propelling you forward. He's not merely a power or a force, though. He's actually a person. And in the Bible, God always refers to him as a person with a personality. So, for example, he has knowledge. He knows things. Only people can know things. He has feelings. He can be sad. He can be happy. He has a will. He has desires to do things. The Bible says in John 16, 8 through 11, talking about Holy Spirit, this is what Jesus said. And when he has come, that word he there is talking about Holy Spirit. When he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they do not believe in me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and you will see me no more, of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. Hey friend, let's talk about spiritual warfare for a hot minute here. When God called the prophet Jeremiah into the prophetic ministry, he told Jeremiah that he had made three changes in Jeremiah that day. And those three changes were made to protect Jeremiah from the rigors and really from the brutality of the ministry that he was going to carry out. And my friend, those three changes that God made in Jeremiah are the same three changes that you and I need God to make in us too. Because God said to Jeremiah that these changes were going to ensure that the enemy couldn't beat him and that God would deliver him and they were going to protect Jeremiah. Well, you know, any kind of ministry can be brutal, but I have a teaching on this where the Lord just gave me a lot of revelation about how to survive the brutal parts of ministry, how to set up boundaries, how to protect yourself in your ministry as you are operating in the prophetic. And this is really for anybody. You don't have to be a full-time vocational minister. You don't have to have a church job. You don't have to be ordained and you don't have to have a title. You can just be a person who hears God and who wants to serve the Lord. If so, then these promises are for you. You can search it out yourself if you want to by studying out Jeremiah's life, or you can listen to my class about it. I have a class that is so powerful. I taught it on video via webinar. It's called Advanced Prophetic 301. And I have that on my Gumroad store. If you want to know how to thrive in the prophetic ministry and not just survive, how to be protected from all the wickedness of the enemy and all of the evil attacks the enemy sends, and how to guard your heart as you walk through the prophetic ministry and as you walk through the process of seeking God in the prophetic, you need this class. It's instantly downloadable on my Gumroad store. It's a video class. It's very affordable, and it's going to help you so much. Please check it out today. I'll put the link in the show notes. Our store is gumroad.com forward slash from his presence. And the name of the class is Advanced Prophetic Ministry 301. It's going to be a blessing to your life. Be sure to grab it today. Hey friend, do you need resurrection in your life? 
If so, I want to tell you about a new ebook that I just released. It's called Live Again 21 Prophetic Words That Make Dry Bones Rattle. And this title comes out of the book of Ezekiel, you know, the vision where the Lord spoke to the prophet Ezekiel and had him speak to the bones and the bones came to life. And if you feel like you have been just dead inside, dry inside, no hope inside, then I want you to know that right now God is moving in your heart, He's moving in your spirit to bring you back to life. And so I made this ebook of these 21 prophetic words that I felt were for right now. Even as I was editing it and putting it together with the help of my team, I was just struck by the words over and over again as God was saying, this is for you. This is for the promises I've made you. This is the covenant I've made with you. This is the new beginnings you've longed for. Over and over, these words just affirmed that, and it's straight from the Word of God. These are prophetic words that I've scribed, listening to the Lord, just taking dictation basically from the Lord, hearing what He had to say, and writing it down for you. So I hope you'll get this ebook. It's called Live Again 21 Prophetic Words That Make Dry Bones Rattle. A smattering of the words include titles such as Do Not Limit the Holy One of Israel, Don't Doubt Your New Beginnings, I Am Restoring Your Happy Tears, Says the Lord fly high with favor you don't need. One of my favorites is a lessening of common grace is kicking you out of the nest. Another one, declare and decree multiplication and increase into your life. A prayer to cross over into the promised land. And another one of my favorites, a prayer, a powerful spiritual warfare prayer for punitive damages in the spirit. This is an ebook you can get on my Gumroad store. It's instantly downloadable. It is a PDF file, 83 pages in length, and easily formatted for you to read on your mobile device. Check it out on my store at gumroad.com forward slash from his presence, and I believe it'll bless you. Now, I'm not going to go deeply into that passage right now, but just to explain briefly, I want you to see that Holy Spirit is a person who, one, arrives places. He comes, although he was already there. But he comes into your heart. When Jesus said this particular passage, Holy Spirit was not yet living inside people, okay? He was actually commissioned to do that after Jesus died. But anyway, Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin. He does things. He's a person. He does things. He convicts the world of sin. He convicts them of righteousness, which means that Holy Spirit shows people Jesus. He shows them what righteousness looks like. And he convicts people of judgment. Meaning, he shows them there's no hope and no future in their sin. So if Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now and convicting you of something, he's showing you that you are not going down the right path. He never throws your head down and pushes your head down and says, there's no hope for you. That's condemnation. That is not from God. That is the devil whom I call the enemy, because I don't even like to say that word, the D word. But Holy Spirit is a convictor and he shows you Jesus. And he shows you what your life could look like if you look like Jesus. He shows you what righteousness is. He shows you what it looks like to be just like God. And so by doing that, he takes you, he lifts your head up. He says, honey, there's hope for you right now. This is what your life can look like. And I'm going to help you get there. He helps you repent. He helps you change your mind, turn around and go the other way and go the way of God. Holy Spirit also has an assignment all of his own. He's a person. He's got work to do. And the Bible says in John 15, 26, says, but when the helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the father, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the father, he will testify of me. Jesus said that. And the reason Jesus said that is because he was predicting and and telling and clarifying to the people that Holy Spirit would have a job and that his job was going to be to show people Jesus, to show people what Jesus looks like, how beautiful Jesus is, to show people that there is forgiveness of sins in Jesus, to show people the love of Jesus, because Jesus loves you so very much. He gave his own life for you and died on a cross. But you know what? He didn't stay there. He got up and in three days, he took his life back. The Bible says he actually had the power to take his life back. And he was seen by hundreds of people alive again. And then he was seen actually physically ascending up into heaven. So Jesus is alive today. Now, Holy Spirit also has knowledge and understanding, as well as the capacity to convey that knowledge to people in order to lead them to Jesus, because his job is to show people Jesus. Holy Spirit is also equal in rank with God the Father and Jesus Christ, God's Son. So he is God just as much as God the Father is, 
Holy Spirit is God just as much as Jesus is God. And Hebrews 9.14 in the Bible says, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? In other words, Jesus actually required the assistance of Holy Spirit to accomplish his perfect and innocent death on the cross. Wow. Hello. Wow. That is just freaky to me. That is amazing. Jesus actually had Holy Spirit's help and had to have the help from Holy Spirit in order to lay his life down on the cross. That was Hebrews 9.14 for those of you who want to go check that out. Holy Spirit has also been seen visibly. That's pretty crazy. Luke 3.22 says that. And you know what? I read a book years ago. It's Reese Howell's Intercessor by Norman Grubb. Amazing book. It's a book that really got me started in the life of prayer and of lifting up other people to God in prayer. In this book, Reese Howells describes that he was a missionary in Africa And at one point, he and all of the people on his team were praying for revival. They were just praying for a huge move of God. And Reese Howells went out for a walk one day, and he actually saw Holy Spirit in person descending. And I believe the Lord has shown me Holy Spirit. I believe he'll show you Holy Spirit. When the Lord shows me his spirit, you know what I see? I see the spirit of God, a person who is a substance called spirit. And he looks like to me, what I see is that he is wearing a large crown and a huge mantle with a big train. And whenever I see this mental picture of Holy Spirit, I absolutely get overwhelmed because I can see just a tiny measure of the veiled power that he is and that he has. It's so far beyond my comprehension that I don't even know how to tell you. I can't. There are no words. And I have only seen a tiny little bit. The whole entire power of God is just crazy. It's just mind blowing. It's mind-boggling. None of us has ever seen the whole entire power of God except for in the person of Jesus Christ. But the point is we can see Holy Spirit. Next, he has feelings. He has feelings. And the Bible says that we should not grieve him or anger him. Now, what are some things that will grieve him? Well, the main one the Bible says is when we prevent him from working. And you know what? Holy Spirit wants to move in your life today. Holy Spirit wants to work in your heart and your life today. Holy Spirit wants to come up under you right now. He wants to propel you forward right now. He wants to inspire you and give you creative ideas and witty inventions right now. He wants to show you Jesus right now. He wants to speak directly to you. Oh yeah, Holy Spirit will speak to you and give you the words that are directly from God. Words just for you for you to hear, words that will heal your heart, words that will inspire you to go out and take your destiny by force, words that will come up under your heart and your spirit when you're lagging, when you're tired, when you're crying, when you can barely see the light. Right now, Holy Spirit of God wants to come up underneath you and rescue you because he's with you and he loves you. He cares about you. He's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. He's the most faithful friend you will ever have and ever know. And he's with you right now. He loves you. And right now I just pray for you and I ask Father God in Jesus name that you would let my friend who is listening to me right now, that you would let them sense your presence and affection, that you would let them draw near to you, that you would draw near to them, that you would draw them close to yourself and they would Feel Holy Spirit with them right now. Oh, I ask, Father God, that Holy Spirit would comfort my friend right now, would encourage my friend, strengthen my friend. I speak and command power into you by the Spirit of God in Jesus' name. And I bless your heart, your soul, your spirit, your body to open and receive ministry from Holy Spirit right now in Jesus' name. Let him touch you at the deepest level, far deeper than you could ever go yourself. Oh, I plead the blood of Jesus over your feelings and your emotions. And I ask right now, Father God, that you, Holy Spirit, would come up under my friend. Rise up under them, strengthen them, encourage them. Show yourself to them as their glory and the lifter of their head. And I ask that this day you would propel them forward into your destiny that you have for them. 
I ask that this day you would inspire them and motivate them, give them creativity and wisdom, witty inventions in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We love you. Now, my friend, I want you to know that today Holy Spirit is with you and he is the one that is going to give you power right this second. He's doing it right now. He's giving you power to go after the territory of your life. And over the weeks, we're going to talk on every podcast about taking the territory of your destiny, taking the territory of your stability and your prosperous life, where you'll be prosperous in your emotions and your mind and your thinking, where you'll be prosperous in your business, where you'll go after the ministry that God has for you, where your finances are going to prosper, your marriage is going to prosper. Your children are going to be prosperous because this is the territory that God has for you to take, but you have to go out and take it. You'll even be prosperous in your health, but you have to go out and take it. And how will you do that? It's not by might nor by power, but by the spirit of God. That's what he says. So I want you today to focus on the fact that Holy Spirit is a person who's with you. Talk to him, get to know him, make him your best friend. Tell him everything about your day as you go through the day and listen to him as he talks back, as he gives you ideas, as he helps you, as he encourages you and comforts you, as he shows himself to you as your friend. I love you, my friend. Thanks so much for taking the time to listen today. Have a super day. Bye-bye.